That would have been a great intro. Just start off with a blah. Welcome back to the Side by Side Guys podcast. I am Big Z. And I am Ian with the hipster hat. <laughs> Stumped you. <laughs> well, all I see is the camera. I was oh, like, wait yeah. a minute, what hat you wearing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I am Ian with full throttle battery. <laughs> and uh, we're super excited to be back on the camera bringing you this podcast. If you're listening to us on audio, we're glad to be back on the mic. Feels like it's been a while. It has been a while. We've yeah. been out and about for the last few weeks. So, Did you enjoy being out and about? It was good to go out in the fresh air and smell the ocean and get Cloud. my foot in the in the sand. Cloud nine. It was a, it was a wonderful time. But before we get to that, let's get to some, some basic news in the industry. As it is every uh, end of winter, spring, uh, there's really nothing to super talk about outside of racing. So uh, Salt Lake Off-Road Expo did end this last weekend. So if you were in the Southwest area of the United States, you were probably enjoying um, that event. There's a lot of good uh, dealers that show up at that event with custom builds, things like that. Uh, And you also get access to some of those manufacturers at that event as well. So um, if you went to that expo and you have uh, any experience or thoughts, uh, cool pictures or anything you want to share, let us know, DM DM us, and uh, maybe we'll share some of those. Get it out there. Uh, the Mint 400 starts this week. Everybody was out uh, marking the course today. Uh, we're, we're recording this on Tuesday, March 3rd. So uh, I saw the posts uh, of everybody out with the markers going down the down the trail system to to mark the course, and uh, looks like it'll be pretty gnar- pretty gnarly. Um, and so uh, we don't really know anyone personally that's involved in this race this time. Um, I you, do. Oh, you do? Yeah. Um, Blake Wilkie's going to be doing the 1600 in the, in a oh, VW in his, bug. In his, yeah. uh, slug shark. Yeah. Yeah. That thing's pretty sick. It is pretty sick. I mean, yeah. I'm not, I'm not much one for like the original like bug series, but, uh, what he's done to that car is pretty impressive. Yeah. I saw his uh, show last night, the family, we all sat down and watched it. It turned out fantastic. There's a, there's actually a cameo of me. You get to see my face blocked by a camera, <laughs> but you do get to see, uh, my full throttle battery hat on top. So oh, the way you're rubbing your head, I thought we we're going to see the yeah. shine off your head. Yeah. Oh, there's a lot of it. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, if you haven't heard Blake Wilkie's come out with a new, um, I guess you can call it a show. It's 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 on YouTube, right? It, it's on YouTube, and it sounds like it's going to be on uh, Amazon Prime as well as Motor Trend TV. Oh, that'd be cool to be yeah. on Motor Trend, yeah, oh, for sure. Um, and so the first episode, they go over you know kind of the introduction stuff that you would expect a first episode of a show to go through, uh, showing who he is, how he got famous, and his original um, what was it called the Land Shark or uh, the Shark? The Shark, yep. yeah. Uh, and uh, they did the Urban Assault. Uh, video that went viral and caused a lot of hoopla and all that. Two and a half million views. Um, and uh, there were some consequences that came along with that. But, was uh, there? Th- but there were some uh, benefits that came along with yeah, that as well. So uh, uh, congratulations to him on blowing up this over the last couple of years and uh, to where he's going nowadays. Uh, and that race bug looks pretty sick and I can't wait to see him out there shredding shredding the, the desert. I can't believe how quickly it came together. I think he was posting... Uh, posting content about going to purchase that thing it has to be within the last 60 days oh yeah he yeah. was he was on it pretty quick so. yeah for sure and the nice thing is if you go look at uh, the content around that build super quality super top notch just like no compromises made they they those guys know what they're doing so well he does it ticks me off <laughs> <laughs> makes me wish that i would have stayed in metal shop as when i was in high school <laughs> paid attention more yeah he's got sure. he's got the skills and the tools to he do does. it so he does yeah I've, I've seen him around some serious off-road people before and take a look at like their pre-runners and stuff and he'll identify some stuff for him give them some suggestions he's so dialed into what needs to get done with these machines to make them reliable out there really knows what he's doing yeah, and I mean, just the testament of all his machines are still out ripping just as hard as they did the day they right. built them. So, right. um, so yeah, Mint 400, looking forward to those results this week. Um, there's a lot of different classes that uh, all have their different you know quirks and, and personalities, so it'll be cool to see the results there. Uh, and then we also got word that Segway is going to be starting up their promotion machine to get their Segway uh, Fugelman and uh, Villain UTVs launched. You excited uh, about that? I, I Well, I mean, we've talked before about the hybrid drivetrain and that being the future of motorized vehicles, especially in power sports. Um, you know, that's that's something that I think is just 
sleeping. People aren't really recognizing how much that'll change the industry for them. Uh, when there's a hybrid drive train that will take you off the line in under three seconds to 60 miles an hour, like you have to build a pretty hot rotted, uh, vehicle to a uh, UTV to be hitting those speeds. And I think these things are capable of doing that out of the gate. If, as long as you know what you're doing when you're under the hood. So, so you just touched on something, knowing what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. After, uh, after the last couple of weeks of seeing machines flipped on their sides and stuff that, uh, that, uh, that's always kind of a gray area. So, you yeah, know, I don't foresee guys like wanting them in scenarios where it's just out riding. I think it's the guys that are going to want it. Uh, the guys that are going to want it are going to be the guys doing drag racing that are going to be doing, um, you know, obstacle uh, stuff where they need the instant torque and the instant power to get in and out of things. Especially if there's some headroom on that thing for some more power. Yeah. So it's supposed to be powered by a thousand cc motor. Um, I believe the twin cylinder four stroke. Um, and it's supposed to put out 181 horsepower. So if you think about comparable motors in that space, the Razor motor is at 182 uh, um, or around that and, and is on a dual cylinder. Um, the Can-Am's putting out uh, well over that, but with a triple. So um, c- considering there's a hybrid drivetrain in front of it, I would suspect that that motor's tuned to put out more power in the mid to high range versus the low range and using that hybrid motor to push out the low end torque to get you off the line faster. So, um, cause those hybrids don't really do much at high speed, high RPM. They do more work on the low end side. So, um, I, I foresee there being some real benefits to a motor like that. And like you said, headroom wise, if you're building it to be really conservative because you're doing all the power, all the heavy lifting up front with the mo- with the hybrid side, um, that could potentially leave a lot of room. You know, the more people watch this podcast, they're going to understand how technically proficient you are and uh, understand <laughs> your knowledge base and stuff. I'm, I'm the guy you just put behind the steering wheel. Like, all I know is I want to drive that thing. I mean, if right. it's sub four, that is so fast. A lot of people don't have appreciation for how quick that is, man. I mean, that's, I mean, you're talking like the, the 70 Hemi Cuda, you know, it, it, you're talking all that stuff was over four seconds. And so now we've got side-by-sides that are cracking that, that are getting down below that. That's just right. ridiculously fast. Did you see the uh, the video that was going around of the Can-Am X3 racing the Porsche? I think I did, yeah. Going through an intersection? Yeah, I think Jerry Zayden actually reposted that and it just smoked it. <laughs> and, yeah. Well, and the, and the Porsche just went straight into like a di- uh, a, a drainage in the in the street or something. Okay, I didn't see that. Then. Yeah, like okay, it just well, took its front clip out. And, oh, wow. Well, and the X3 obviously just flew right over it, but... I have in the last month to month and a half seen an X3 out drag a Lamborghini though. Yeah. And I mean, uh, that X3... It, the ride height was set up correctly on it. Like it was look, it, it looked like it was a whoop monster. Was it and down I, on Hoosiers and no, all ready to no, go? No, dude. I think it was on 32s. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it smoked it. Wow. So. Uh, that's amazing what clutching will do for you. So. I guess. Yeah. Uh, uh, so super excited to see them come out because here, well, okay. So I have some beef. So. Here we go. <laughs> the, the, there's a lot of interest in coming into our market. When I say our market, I mean the UTV off-road community. Uh, by outside vendors that have traditionally been in other uh, product categories. And so Segway is coming in from a place of personal transport, right? They don't really have a Segway car. They don't have a Segway truck. They don't have a tractor. They don't have any of that kind of stuff associated with the manufacturers that deal with side-by-sides. So there's a lot of interest to op- to kind of capitalize on the market opportunity of our growing industry. And you see somebody like Segway come in who is used to putting products out in a almost like a press release form where it's just all the, all the news coverage is going to come because you put the news release out and they're going to cover it, put the website post up, put the Facebook post up, put up all that stuff. But there's no, I mean, no one's had their hands on it. No one's had their eyes on it. The only people that have seen it have been at the trade shows where it was launched CES and the European uh, version of that. Um, other than that, there's been no hands-on, there's been no videos, there's been no content around it, there's been no marketing around it. It's just been this little splash at the beginning of CES time saying, we're going to do this, and then there was this dead period. And now they're saying, hey, we're going to be coming out this summer with it. Um, the rumor is in uh, June, July. So uh, they're starting to, to spin up the wheels on getting content put out for Instagram and all that stuff, but I there's no hands-on there's nobody there there's nobody that 
can say, hey, they brought us out. Let's take a look at it, go over it. Now, I'm assuming that's probably going to happen in June. I'm assuming they're going to have a press day with it or whatever. Uh, but from a tradition standpoint, uh, there's no uh, effort to really communicate why they're there. Right. And that's what concerns me, especially in the tech space with things that come and go so fast. Like, how long have we known about Nikola? Over a year and a half now, two years, something like that. And there still hasn't been one out anywhere on the market. Right. Um, and so I, I have more faith that Segway's going to put a machine out than I do Nikola. But at the same time, I'm concerned that they're not putting enough effort and, and brute force behind it to push it into the industry. And that hybrid train technology may be lost to a failed launch attempt. Then Honda so, will get in there and nail it. <laughs> do you think Honda would take that kind of approach, or do you think Kawasaki would take it? I think or it, Yamaha? It'd be Honda if anybody was going to do it. Really? I think so. Yeah. I, I don't know. I think Yamaha might be open to it. But, I mean, they're looking at the future of, like, e-bikes and all that kind of stuff, too. So, um, you know, maybe that's in their wheelhouse. Yeah, I don't know. There's so much hype going on right now in the industry. I know that, uh, you know, I have i couldn't begin to tell you how many times I've heard that Yamaha has something big coming for 2021, which, you know, that could be announced anywhere from August to November. Anytime between now and right. the end of the year. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it would be advantageous of them to announce it at Sandsport. That's ideally the target. I mean, I don't even know how many people go in and out of Sandsport. It's probably like 50,000. Yeah, so it's up there. Yeah, I would say there are SEMA. Yeah. Or just to drop one at some sort of like race event and be like, yeah, we're pre approved. We're racing our new machine. Right. (laughs) How awesome would it be to come into a race event? You're just totally stoked on your machine. Your team's been working so hard all year on building this race vehicle to get out in the race series this summer. And you show up and then some no namer guy shows up with a brand new machine from a vendor. How crazy would that be to show up with a vehicle that's unproven, unknown? And just totally take the scene. That would be crazy. It would be, for sure. Yeah, I went on their website the other day, and they have some content that they develop in-house for... Uh, sport, You're referring to Yamaha? Yamaha for sport bikes. And you and I are kind of a sucker for clips or being kind of producer photographers ourselves. We just eat that stuff up. Go look at it. It is so sick. Like, their their videos for crotch rockets are just awesome. And I'm like, where is this in UTV? Because I saw a statistic and somebody could email us if I'm wrong. But if you take all the Japanese OEs, if you take every single one of them and take every dirt bike that they make from a 50 all the way up to a 450, and you add all that up, Polaris sells more Polaris Rangers than those four oh, OEs sure. combined. Yeah. And obviously, I mean, we've, we've talked about how much this market is ascending and uh, I don't think it's going anywhere. So for a, for a juggernaut like Yamaha to just sit pat on a couple of machines, like, you know, obviously they had a little bit of a redesign with the Wolverine, but it wasn't going to, it's not a game changer. You know, the YXZ is just way, way overdue for an upgrade. And I don't right. know if that's an upgrade. I don't know if they want to come out with a model that's turboed, a wider model, a longer model. All of those are great ideas. Yeah, because it is a good car. It's a very, very good car. And when you consider the fact that they put out only a trim level change this year on the YXZ. Great trim. Great, but, but, great look. But not a game changer. <laughs> they literally yeah. just put a winch on it yeah. and called it new. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I think that the they've left the door open for that new model to come out. And I think that is a sign of something changing. Uh, fingers are crossed that that's actually what's happening. Yeah. Um, because I do want to see... You know, the approach that Yamaha took was, you know, from a different angle. And I want to continue to see people take different angles at our industry because that's how we continuously push ourselves forward and and better our equipment and better our industry. So um, I'm super excited for Yamaha to just knock it out of the park. I really want them to to do it. And um, I would I'd be super stoked to see them come out with a hybrid drivetrain like something the Segway is doing where they're saying, like, look, yeah, we we have the motor. But we want to rule the takeoff. We want to rule the kill climbs. We want to rule all of it. And I think one of the most important ways to do that. They got to change suspension geometry to be able to do that. They got to change the vehicle's entire concept. And then they need to have more low end power. Right. And so. um, I can tell you, and I'll. Sorry, everybody. I have to tell you this off camera. But uh, I do have a very, very good buddy in the industry that uh, Honda's backing him on a build and just told him to go nuts 
completely nuts with it. I cannot wait to see where he takes it. We're going to be involved in it from a battery standpoint. So it's a partner that we've had since day one when I started. But it is very, very cool to see Honda seek out industry partners that they know can build these things to just these phenomenal levels. And uh, I can't wait to see where this thing have goes. Have you seen it's some be of the four seater though? Have you seen some of the Honda racing cars? They're insane. They're, they're so sick. They're so good. They're so sick. I can't wait to see those things just tear it up. They're yeah. like, it, they're they've took the two seater, stretched it out to the four seater. Yep. Without using the four seater. Yeah, man. It looks it, it looks closer to like a. It's, cl- oh yeah, I don't even want to talk about it. it just ticks the me front off. foot, the front end's like a foot longer than the cab. Right. The back end's like a foot longer than the cab. And you're talking about the stuff they ran at Baja, ran at Dakar, and all that. They right? haven't really ran any of them yet. Well, I've seen footage of it out Have there. You? Oh. Well, they're just—I mean—the racing season's just taken off, so they're right. gonna—they're gonna be really tearing into it. But those cars are so good, and I can't wait to see—you uh, know—what they do with that. So, uh, they got a lot of good racers too. They got a pretty well-stacked team, and um, I expect a lot from that. For team. sure. So, um, anyways, how do we get onto that topic? <laughs> Segway. So we, uh, we, go, we go all over the so place. So hopefully, um, you know, the end of this month or so, we're gonna start seeing materials coming out for the Segway. And uh, we're going to probably be talking a lot more about it um, if they actually are committed to pushing these things out to the community. So uh, hopefully uh, someone at Segway is listening to this and will uh, maybe hit us up for some hands-on time. That'd All be right. awesome. I got I to gotta put you on the spot. So the XP uh, General, your, your level of stoke, 1 to 10. Polaris General XP. Yes. Pretty sweet deal. 1 to 10. Go. 8. Segway. Go. 8. What? Come on now. No variance? Nope. Because Eight. here's the difference. is One is targeted towards... One you know is coming. One we could go to a dealer and get our hands on it right now. Yeah. That one, gets I've me been excited. in one. I've driven one. Oh, they're awesome. They're great machines. Yeah. And they're, they're very capable as far as a platform to build off of. So we'll get to it in a bit, but I mean, Superior's built a pretty awesome machine as well. Mm-hmm. So, oh, um, oh, yeah, yeah. Like the, the possibility to build a very, very competent machine is there. So I'm pretty stoked. And like just sitting in one is just, it's off the rails. So on a Segway, like my, my level of intrigue is about an eight. My level of being stoked is about a five. You know, until you see it, until you know it's something tangible that you can get your hands on, I mean, I'm not going to go do jumping jacks, you know. <laughs> I mean, honestly, my level of stoke. Here, here's, here's why my stoke level is <clears throat> high. It's two reasons. One is because of hybrid. New technology. New tech, right. new torque, new power. Second is because Segway already put stuff out. They already have manufacturing process. They already have things in the market. And they've had that for, what, 20 years? So uh, I, I just give them more credit and more credence to put something out than I do someone like Nikola, who just puts it out as a marketing object. So that's how I see Nikola at the moment. It's just it's a marketing gimmick. So while there's a ton of R&D and money put in, into making that happen, um, until it becomes into the community for purchase, it's not a, a, something that I'm excited about. Now, Segway, it, I foresee it happening. I foresee we've talked about how similar it looks to other machines and how similar the um, the manufacturing process looks in comparison to other vehicles. Probably sourcing parts from similar companies is. I'd be willing to bet that they're Polaris. pulling they're pulling frames or pulling sure. manufacturing process from other companies that are already in the industry. And they're simply dr- delivering a hybrid powertrain uh, to implement. So, um, and just the fact that if you've ever used a Segway product, you know that the quality, the build quality is high, the tech quality is high, everything is high quality with Segway. So, um, you know, a lot of people look at them as a gimmick. You know, Mal, was it uh, Bart, Bert, Blart, Mall Cop, or whatever that movie was? Uh, everyone thinks of it as kind of like a, just a silly gimmick for Hollywood, right? But Segway does have a lot of products that are actually sold around the world. So I stand before you a man that has never watched a Kevin James vehicle, <laughs> and I never will. <laughs> I can't blame you too yeah. far on that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so on the level of Stoke, Segway, the, uh, the general, we covered that. What about speed? Uh, Speed's pretty low on my interest really? level. Yeah, uh, now I'm pretty high on it just because I've been in the, I've been in kind of what you know I've been in the Wildcat 2Xs. I mean, super comfortable. There's yeah. a, there's a lot of things I really liked about it. It just didn't hit hit a home run for right. me, but it could have. Here, and, here's and maybe that maybe this is going to take it over the over the edge. But 
I've got no news on that. Yeah. None. So, so they've I been putting out a lot on. of design concepts and things like that to stoke the community around kind of where they're going with it. Uh, so they're actually in that design phase. Now, um, I would say that at launch, at announcement time, they made it sound more like we're already past that phase, but they weren't. So I foresee their output being further down the road than they've said it was going to be. I don't foresee them hitting their target goal dates um, with the new plastics and all that stuff. I see them uh, possibly putting out vehicles that are based off the XX at the like they have currently they have vehicles for sale right now right um i foresee those getting made i don't foresee them having a fully manufactured new vehicle by the end of the year and um i also i mean we've talked about this before i have a personal feeling that speed utv is basically a wrapper for robbie gordon's race team and something for them to uh, a, a loophole for them to go into the racing with a custom built vehicle without having to rely on Textron, Polaris, Can-Am, or whoever to build the car that they want. Right. Yeah, that design, though, you know, it'd be interesting to see where he takes it because I'm not trying to beat up on anybody, and I I really, really have a tough time being hypercritical, but I do know some people that own Textron, Arctic Cat, the 2X Wildcat, Yep. and they're getting out of them as quick as they can. Just, well, there's they're no, so there's stale. No, there's no support, Yeah. And but the components are failing. Mm. You know, having some reliability issues, and that's just that's what parts that's are you hearing are are falling? Uh, I'd have to hit up a couple of my guys, but uh, uh, transmission stuff, clutch stuff, a uh, lot of axle stuff. Yeah, but I got to get verification on that. But you know, the two guys that I know that bought them that are pretty hard on machines. One guy, um, one guy that I know of that lives in central uh, central Washington. He raced almost two years short course on a YXZ that was almost stock, had a flash on it, and that was about it. He didn't regear it, he didn't do anything, and that thing survived. He won a championship up here in the Northwest on that car in the pro class against the turbos. I don't even know the last time he was in a short course race because that that 2X that he bought probably eight months ago, nine months ago, it hasn't been able to get through, uh, you know, one, two races. It's Hmm. always having breakdowns, so. I mean, when you see him at races, it's, it's interesting because they never top the podium. They're never at the bottom of the podium, but everybody's kind of like curious, like, oh, there's a texture on here. Like, right. It, right. Okay. <laughs> no one's really excited that they're there. No one's really talking about it. Just like, oh, they're, they're still around. Yeah. So, have you been in one? I have been in one. Yeah. The interior was comfortable. It was Everything uh, seemed legit I, and yep. fine. The doors, probably my favorite doors in the industry. Print and finish was good. Yep. The bed, the rear bed. So, I mean, if I was going to go tear down uh, the Washington backcountry route, the Idaho route, there's so much room in that thing for gear. Like, I was in, I was all in for sure. I thought it would be a cool car, but if it won't hold up, it is what it is. Yeah. It was, it's, when I was in one, it seemed really boaty. Um, and that could have been suspension. That could have been the handling, just the fact that it was new. Um, all that kind of stuff. So, um, I would say that, uh, it's probably, I, I, we've talked about the future of Textron, uh, and we, we both all, we, everybody agrees that we're kind of just holding our breath, hoping that they hold on and do something new. Um, because at the moment they're just dying. Well, the industry needs, needs competition. We need competition and we need different perspectives. We need different takes on things, new angles, uh, and that was something that the, the Wildcat brought to us, right? It had that wishbone trophy style rear suspension and all that kind of stuff. Right. Um, so yeah, I, I, as far as going back to the original question about speed UTV, um, I don't foresee, I'm not super excited in that. I, I am excited to see the power and I'm super excited to see one of these machines actually come to fruition and, and, and rip it up. On the other hand, I'm not stoked on the company putting out mass available machines. Uh, so until they prove me wrong, that's kind of where I'm at. I'm excited about 300 horsepower. That'd who, be crazy. Who wouldn't it be? Oh, yeah. Um, but at the same point, um, if only the guy that has Lambos in his garage can afford it because he was the one that put twice the amount of money down to get it, then what's the difference? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so anyways, um, oh, I'm looking at our outline and we are so far off the rails right now. <laughs> Always works like that. So Segway should be, uh, coming out here in the next couple months as yeah. far as, uh, more content and pricing and availability. Um, so that'll be exciting for my curiosity. 
um, and supposedly available to get hands-on in July. So that's kind of the time frame we're looking at. It'd be super interesting to see one of those out at Dune Fest. Do you think they would bring one? No. You don't think they'd show no. up? Because, hmm. I mean, that's really the only event around that time that's an actual industry event, community event. I'd be shocked. Polaris is out there with machines. can out there with machines. Was Polaris out there last year? I, I don't wasn't, think Polaris I wasn't there last year, so I don't know. I mean, if they were out there, it was probably a dealer that uh, Polaris worked Oh, very possibly. There, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. Can-Am was out at TakeOver last year. but So, uh, looking forward to them, uh, you know, hitting the industry hard. And I'm, well, I'm hoping they hit, hit the industry hard so that we can all benefit from it. For sure. Um, so, uh, we've been busy, as we mentioned, the last few weeks. Holy cow. What, uh, what transpired? Well, uh, where do you want to start? So, um... We spent three, four nights, three nights in a trailer, got one night in a hotel. I would say in the course of four days, we collectively slept. I don't mean collectively, between the three of us, maybe about <laughs> 21 hours, somewhere in that ballpark. But it was a good time. We, uh, so uh, we, got, to, we tro- got to go out to Winchester Bay. and Winchester uh, Bay, Oregon, yeah, yeah. from northeast Washington. Is that your first time out there on the, in, during the winter? At, at this time of year, yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, it looks a little different than than it does during Dune Fest. Yeah, it, it averages a high nineties when I'm when I've been there before. Yeah, high nineties. Yeah, in temperature. Yeah. What? Yeah. I wouldn't even know what that look. I've never <laughs> been out there. It was ninety degrees. The the first time I went out there, uh, the first year we met, seventeen was it seventeen sixteen seventeen. Uh, I was as red as a cherry tomato because I was so burnt and so over like dehydrated. I can, I can and, see that. Yeah. Um, and I was just because I was standing in the sun the whole time. So, uh, but uh, yeah, every time I've been out there, it's been pretty hot, but the wind has usually helped with that. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so being out there in the rain, being out there in the cold temperature was definitely different for me. Yeah. A lot of fun out there, man. But I got to tell you during the winter and you don't, We'll go into more detail later as, as it pertains to the video that was released. You get that scope of how blown out that place gets during the winter. And it's so cool. Just so many interesting features that that will bite you, mm-hmm. you know, if you're not showing us some love. But, uh, yeah, during the winter, it's a totally different animal. The sand's usually pretty tacky, pretty hard. You were out there on big horns. Yeah. No paddles for me. Piece of cake. <laughs> yeah. Holding lines. No The problem. old 16 turbo holding yeah. on strong. For sure. For sure. So we went out there to an event that at some point in time was referred to as Goons in the Dunes. It was renamed something this year to something else. But essentially, uh, uh, community ride day on President's Day to go hang out and have some fun on the dunes. Yeah, the big groups show up, uh, big riding groups, uh, big thread pages on Facebook. Um, you get some industry people out there. It's something that Jim from UTV Takeover tries to put together, and it's it's... It's official, but not official. So it's one of those things where it's kind of an excuse for us all to get together, rub some elbows, shake some hands, and right. uh, have some fun. Yeah. So it's before the the trade show season starts, where things go absolutely mental, and <laughs> before no one has any opportunity exactly. to talk to each other. Exactly. So uh, yeah, we traveled from north from Spokane County down to Oregon, five hundred and fifty um, miles. First uh, first day was uh, a long trek from Washington down to the top of Oregon. And ended up in Eugene uh, overnight. Uh, but before we got to Eugene, where did we stop? Well, uh, we stopped at uh, G- TGM in Pasco. Saw my buddy Bernie. Um, I think we covered it. Bernie was one of the um, one of the guys that helped me out with the YXE build. Had a lot of great information as I was getting into this industry. You know, I was coming from dirt bikes and stuff, and found out very very quickly that uh, there's a lot of stuff that goes into the side by side. A lot of different options and. You know, I, I, you know, I've been pretty fortunate that I haven't explored any like bad options, but man, having a guy like Bernie, having a guy like at the time it was experienced power sports out of Moses Lake, they were more than happy to help out. It, uh, it was, it really kind of got me off on the right foot, but, um, went down there, Bernie's running his own shop now. And, uh, as you can see by the sheer volume of X3s that were parked out, he really knows what he's doing with that machine. And, uh, we did a kind of a homebrew cat delete on that car and we did a three R tune on it as well. An Evo 3R. The Evo 3R. Yep. Yep. So that uh, uh, that tune, I believe, uh, ups the the fuel shot and upgrades or requires an, uh, a bigger blow off uh, PSI. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Evo posts all those numbers and stuff. They post all those dyno numbers. And uh, 
I've heard so much conflicting information because it behooves them to be conservative with their numbers for sure. You know, I, let's just say it, let's just say they know that it puts down forty to the rear tires, but they uh, they're promoting that it puts down thirty. You right. know, I, if I did ten drag runs or on a, I'm sorry, drag runs. If I did ten pulls on a dyno, I would post the lowest number. You know, for sure. That's exactly how it go to go to it. But I mean, I've seen guys on a three R Evo tune put down one seventy eight to the wheels. I've watched it happen. Mm. You know, and I want to say that they promote that it puts down somewhere around 160 so to the wheels to the wheels and when i got on that car out there um it it definitely it definitely woke it up but i knew 100 percent because sand's a totally different animal that i wouldn't know what it did till i got home and changed tires right because you, your previous experience with the car because it's so new to you is bone stock was just bone stock yep. on the liberties and the and the loose dirt around your farm yep and uh, not really a lot of seat time on it, per se. Uh, you did go to Moses Lake at least once, I think. Not, uh, uh, stock, yes. On stock, yeah. yeah. Uh, so you had a little bit of experience there driving in, in on hard pack and then also on, on some hard sand. Uh, so I guess the hard sand in Moses Lake was relatively close to maybe the wet sand in, in Winchester. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I would say overall, I had a great ride. I had a great ride. The car, the car performed great. And, you know, one thing that Evo is absolutely notorious for, and I'm not, you know, you and I are not brand honks. You and I are not paid by anybody. You and I are completely objective as it pertains, especially when we have to pay money for stuff, which, which I did. And, uh, I can tell you right now that they have a reputation for being very reliable. I just, I'm very happy very happy with how that thing performed out there. You know, when it, you say it, they, are you referring to J M or Evo? Evo. Evo, yeah. To that tune. I mean, from a reliability standpoint, it uh, it did exactly what I've been hearing, what I've been reading. You know, that's one thing that Bernie at TGM said. He goes, he was basically saying that he'd been, he'd been dealing with Evo, working with Evo for so long. He gave me kind of um, a thing to do in the event that I had a problem. But then he flat out said, he goes, it would be the first problem that I'd had. Right. And uh, I had that experience. You know, I just, I had a very, very positive experience with that tune. Yeah. There was no hiccups. There was no break in time. It was, yeah. you flashed it, adjusted the, the wastegate. And I like, was kind of concerned about fuel consumption. Piece of cake. Yeah. yeah it, it was it, a little hungry, but it no, wasn't not, too bad. Not terrible. Yeah. Not terrible. I, I was, I was pleasantly surprised, but it, it did wake the car up, you know, no doubt about it. I would say you were eating probably a good 20% more, 30% Could more be. gas than I was. Could be. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now granted my Can-Am's gas gauge lies, you know, <laughs> for sure. You know, for, you know for sure. if it says that I'm full, you know, that thing's got a 10.5 gallon tank and, uh, it would say that I was full and I would run that thing down to where it would just have next to nothing. A yeah. fiver would fill it. Right. So it's completely full of crap. <laughs> yeah. I'd be really interested to see, maybe the community knows and can share with us if there's a different, uh, fuel gauge instrument that can be installed that would be a better gauge of where it's at because or maybe there's just like no baffling in the tank or something right. that just causes this to happen but well, i've you, yet to see a machine that actually has an accurate fuel gauge on it right and you and i are going to validate before we go on some of these big trips this summer you know I, I can leave my house and be on pavement for less than a mile and disappear into the farmlands mm -hmm. and it's totally cool in lincoln county they do not care you just got to obey laws and stuff you don't have to drive like a jerk but uh or you don't want to drive like a jerk well you and, are driving a can-am well i mean i'm not saying i won't flog <laughs> that thing where it's appropriate but but nonetheless um i could leave my house and put on 200 300 miles and never see the same road and then still just come back to my house. So we're going to do some pre-running and see what kind of range we can get out of that car because we need to know that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So the Evo Tune t definitely woke it up. And I heard a couple of people giving you flack on you haven't had enough seat time to really know what, what the difference was. But um, we, you did have some some gry drown. Gry. Dry ground. Gry, gry drown. Gry drown. Drown gry. Sounds dry like ground. A, sounds like a band name. <laughs> That's your new punk band. Yeah. Um, so you've had dry ground time with the machine. It's not like you haven't driven it. Um, and you said that when you got back, you put your Maxis back on, yep. right? Uh, what was that experience like? <laughs> it's enough. Yeah. Got well, it. Yeah. Uh, so far, it's made one person cry. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not exaggerating. You know, when you leave, when you head south out of my house, and uh, go through our our prairie ground. 
we've got a lot of uh, farm equipment back there. Yeah. And there's a road that kind of S's its way through that stuff, winds its way through that stuff. If you get out of shape, you lose your car, you're going to run into that stuff, and it is not forgiving. You're going to get hurt very, <laughs> That big very chunk badly. of steel is not yeah. going to move. Yeah. So when you flog that car and go through that stuff, man, that car picks up fast. Oh, yeah. Very quick, you know what I mean? I know. And it was R- already fast. Well, the 3R tune is... To the best of my knowledge, it's one of it's their most conservative tune, and it wakes it up like you wouldn't believe. I had the car up over ninety in the back stretch. Uh, yeah, I, I'm 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 very impressed. You know, on sand, sand just it's, sand robs horsepower. You know, you could make use of two hundred twenty five to two hundred fifty horsepower out at Winchester Bay. On dirt, 250 horsepower will kill you if you disrespect <laughs> it, you know. For and, sure. And uh, I got to tell you, man, I, I was very, very happy, very impressed with where that car is sitting right now. It's very quick. You know, and as a matter of fact, we'll go into it a little bit more, but the car is at the cage builder right now, and I took him for like a 100-yard loop. That's it. And I came around a corner in two-wheel drive, just a blip of the gas. That's oh, yeah. it. You're talking half throttle. Cars at a 45-degree angle burning rubber. Mm-hmm. You know, it's quick. It's awesome. Quick. And we'll have more seat time with it uh, as it uh, warms up a little bit and we're able to get some clear weather to, sure. to get some cameras on it and whatnot. So, um, you know, I don't know what that car is going to look like two years from now. I've got plans. I've got big horsepower plans. I don't know where it's going to go, but I can tell you right now in terms of what uh, what Evo develops, you know, I had some questions about it and I, I just sent Todd, uh, who owns Evo, a uh, direct message on Facebook, on Facebook Messenger. I'd say he got back to me in three minutes. You know, there's value to that. There's a e- lot of Evo's value to that. Evo's proven themselves as they a have. community positive company. Yep. So, yep. Uh, so shout out to those guys. Uh, if you're looking at any kind of flashing, things like that, you can buy uh, flashed ECUs as, you, as well as able to send them in or go to a local dealer that is Evo certified that has the, the equipment to do it. So. Uh, so shout out to Bernie at TGM for flashing Absolutely. your unit and taking care of you. Yeah. And like you said, you did a cat delete on it. Uh, they, they were installing the muffler back onto that and they started it up and there was a big exhaust leak. It wasn't really sealed up to the muffler and it sounded so good without the muffler. I just wanted them to leave it off. Right. But, uh, Winchester does have, uh, noise ordinance ordinances in place and I'm sure most places do. Um, but yeah, I can't wait to hear that thing. Just raw, raw pipe again. You know, what's funny is like when you look at some of the, uh, GoPro footage from day one off your, off your hood, I'm nowhere to be found on day one. Cause I'm just playing, you know, I'm just out there playing. I'm just testing. Oh, how fast is this thing? You oh know, yeah. Let's, we were, let's go. We were pretty much just like, okay, yeah. you went that way yeah. somewhere. Yeah. And then like, uh, by day three and stuff, I, I gotten used to it and we were playing around kind of doing, uh, just kind of not sightseeing. We were, we were on the gas. We we're on the you gas. You did side. your first wheelie day three. Uh, you know what? <laughs> that wheelie got like 20,000 views on Instagram that I could have done that stock for the record. You know, that's, that's paddles. That's paddles, that's suspension rebound, and that's hitting the gas right at the right time. And having the right takeoff, the right jump. Ha- exactly, exactly. The Evo tune, uh, it just made it easier. Just made it easier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, the Can-Ams, the Can-Ams will make a make a pretty average driver look pretty good at times. <laughs> so uh, so we, we spent the night in Eugene, uh, and uh, the next day we headed over to Superior Motorsports, which I hadn't been able to make my way over there yet until that trip. So, uh, new experience for me to hit those guys up and, and shake hands and, and see what they're, what they're up to. And, uh, they had some pretty, pretty cool cars there for sure. What'd you like um, most? I already know the answer, but go ahead. <laughs> so, well, let's just talk about maybe in some order, some build up order here. So, uh, the first car, um, was the XP turbo, uh, S4, uh, which was completely overhauled, uh, by the superior team, custom build from the ground up. Uh, and, uh, they did a pearl paint job on it. All it was, the whole cage is painted and, and all of it. That car was in SSV's booth in, uh, at Sandsport. Oh, was it? Yep. And, uh, so yeah, full, full audio system build out with color matched everything. Uh, and then it has a whole bunch of superior, uh, parts on it, steering wheels and, uh, grills and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and the thing I really liked about that build, um, is that it was just so practical. Like nothing on the car was done in a way that was like, well, they just did that because they had money. Like outside of the paint and the, you know, the fluffy look, it wasn't really done up in a way that was like, oh, they put this thing on there just because they wanted to show off. It was all very practical stuff. It completely pops. It pops. It just jumps off and it is totally, yeah, I mean, you're using the right word. It's practical. It's not over the top at all. 
Yeah. 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 It's such a clean build for sure. And just the, the small touches where they took like uh, the primary and secondary clutches and, and co- powder coated them to match the rest of the, the vehicle. Like that kind of stuff is just stuff that ties it all together and Even makes the it. the wheels. Yeah. And just takes it a step above the other bolt on builds. So definitely was a cool car. Um, from what we talked to them about it, it totally just rips as far as in the dunes and everything else. So uh, cool car. Um, it's for sale, by the way. Actually, both of their cars that we're going to talk about are for sale. So um, they had some other cars there. Some They had some Yamahas and a 900 uh, XP and a couple other cars out there that they were working on. But uh, the one that I really, and I'm sure that you probably were just as stoked on to see. I'm uh, still geeking out on it. Is the Polaris General 1000 build. Um, it wasn't a XP 1000. They had built it up to be better than an XP 1000, but um, and it is. Uh, but it's um, pretty much everything I would do to a general. They took care of in that build. Well, let's go down the checklist. What did you see? I saw HCR long travel. Well, let's start at the top. Yeah. So at the very top, they had a Safari type rack, a Razorback rack. It was a Razor. Yep. Uh, well, you're, you're talking. You're talking about the back, the bed side. I'm no, talking no. about the the top of the cage. I could have swore that thing was. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure it was a superior build rack. Okay. But, uh, and then it had side lighting on it for scene lighting. Um, and it's low profile, boxed in. It was really good looking. Uh, and then you work your way down to the inside. So the seats were upgraded. The harnesses were upgraded uh, or harnesses were put in. Uh, s- steering wheel, sound system, all was there. All legit, all color matched. Uh, so that was all great. And then you get to the, uh, you know, the doors and everything else were all treated well. And the best part was all below f- that. So everything from the doors down was was awesomeness. King suspension, custom king color match suspension. I don't, I don't um, know. I don't know what turbo kits on it. So it's running it, about eight psi. It's a force turbo. Okay. So they have a force turbo. It's installed aftermarket to the stand, to the OEM block, and uh, it actually on the generals comes out the back. So the actual turbo and the muffler are all next to each other at the back, and it's all stainless steel, all beautiful. And uh, I, I, don't, I don't remember what size turbo it was, but it was big enough that it made me go, hmm, yeah, yeah, that, that'll work. And, uh, and so then they, they upgraded the, the A-arm kits to the HCR long travel, which I don't know if you've seen HCR long travel suspension for a general but it's so aggressive looking. It's 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 awesome. Everything those guys do is aggressive looking. It looks so killer. <laughs> yeah, it's such a great build. Yeah. Uh, and so talking with the guys, they were saying that um, you know that the the machine rips in the trails, but it keeps up in the dunes with all the big cars that they can drive that car or one of the other cars and still have the same experience. So uh, for a big boxy tall vehicle to keep up in the dunes with all the high power turbo cars, uh, that's saying something about the build. I get emotional just thinking about it. That car was so awesome. I mean, we've got so many plans this summer, and that thing would be such an amazing piece to go out in the mountains with and uh, just just destroy. So you, you know, know how they have the a car, luxury the version mountains. of they have a luxury version of camping called glamping, like <laughs> like trail like <laughs> overlanding in that car would be like glamping. It's overkill. <laughs> yeah. So super cool. The only thing I can think of that that I was while I was looking at it was missing was some sort of like. Uh, top tent system uh, with the awning and all that kind of stuff. Come which... on, Will. Oh my <laughs> gosh. So uh, if, if put, it was mine... Put that's... the CVT rooftop on that bad boy. Yeah. So that's the only thing I could think of that was missing, but that's personal preference. Yeah. So CVT uh, being Cascadia vehicle tent. Nice. Not the tra- not the clutch. <laughs> <laughs> we need a clutch on the top. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So I just pulled up because uh, I, I took some pictures of the roof rack. Yeah. I'm, I'm, my Mac is like fighting me but uh yeah i'm trying to trying to find a picture uh something close up or maybe a, say you might be right they yeah you guys can check it. out the video we posted of on the vlog vlog uh so at side by side guys dot link slash vlog two and uh you can watch the video we have a we have coverage of all the vehicles we're talking about there um so you can see the the, the video from there um and like i like ian said the XP Turbo S4 and the General Build are both for sale. So if you're curious on, you know, maybe purchasing a vehicle like that without having to go through all the, the upfront cost of building it, um, hit up uh, the Superior Motorsports team, uh, DM them uh, or Will uh, at Superior, and uh, maybe work you out a sweet deal. There you go. Tell them side, side by side guys sent you. There you go. After Superior, we uh, took uh, another quick jaunt through the Oregon forests to Winchester, 
eventually made our way over there um, in pretty good time. Uh, we were there just after lunch or so. So so yeah. Um, we ran. You know, you know, you go into a place. I, I think uh, we did spend a lot more time at Superior than we thought. We yeah, were going we actually to, covered so. it on the last last podcast. You yeah. go in there f- expecting to stay about a half an hour to forty five minutes because those guys have to work and stuff, and then you look at your watch and you've been there two hours. Yeah, you know, and that's it's all positive. It's all work related stuff. You're just you know chopping it up. Yeah. Well, when you have good guys talking about cool things, that's, that's what happens. So, uh, we got there, uh, arrived to the Umqua campground. So we had a lot of people asking about where we were staying while in Winchester. Uh, Umqua is right on the bay before you turn into the dunes, right where the entrance is. Yeah. We got there a day early too. We got there a day before everybody starts showing yeah, up. Yeah, Friday. That's exactly what we were looking for. And so it's nice, uh, in that it's super close. It's right off the road. Uh, so you can just jump back in the town if you need to. Um, you can jump right onto the dunes if you need to. Uh, they have on-site facilities for showers and and all that kind of stuff as well. So we we actually were uh, treated to be able to get a space away from that building. So in the rain and, and cold, it wasn't too far away. Yeah. All it took was a little bribery. Yeah. Uh, and they're expanding out there. So they're going to be having... Boy, are they. Like they're <laughs> over doubling their size. Well over. Yeah. 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 I was impressed. No, it's going to be, and it's just kind of a testament to what's happening in this industry. They're doing that because they have to. Right. It's not like they're a new area to ride. They've right. been around forever. So uh, the UTVs are really taking over uh, the economic impact of the off-road world and, and communities are starting to see that. Yeah. So uh, being out there more frequent than I have, uh, I'm cause a good place to stop. Uh, are there any other prefer- preferred areas out there? So, um, the vendor row for Dune Fest, right behind it, you could basically cross the road. There's a little trail that um, is literally right there, and mm-hmm. uh, it'll take you to the VIP camping area. And there's not a lot of uh, access to facilities because most of the people that use that are they're running big pushers, uh, toy haulers, something that kind of self sufficient. So you got power back there, and that's about it. That's kind of a nice area because. If you walk behind it, if you just walk to the west and just hop up on that little sandbank, you can see the ocean and stuff. So, yeah, I, I mean, there's always room for growth and stuff. As, as far as it pertains to the uh, the uh, campground that's across from Umqua, I've never stayed. I've never stayed at that, but I have parked and stayed a bit at the VIP area, and it, it it's a it's all comfortable. It's it's very connected. You know, the, there's a there's multiple campgrounds uh, campgrounds down the road as well, and I would never stay at one of those. I would stay at a hotel in Reedsport before I stayed at one of those. <laughs> well, well, it's just I, it, it's just because I don't want to um, I don't want to drive two miles on my scats on pavement to gotcha. to go out before I get out because they don't have dunes. dune access. Exactly, gotcha. that's exactly what it is. Is that because they're on the du- on the ocean side? Uh, they are on the ocean side, and I mean they're both, but I mean you're talking. I would say the closest one is probably about a quarter mile uh, further down the road yeah. from the dunes. It's I mean, a lot, it's you, a lot of slapping pavement. Yeah, we were on the dunes inside of a hundred yards. Yeah, we weren't. We we hit maybe an eight foot section of driveway before getting to the sand. So right. Um. So, anyways, uh, for everybody that's been asking about where we stay, we stayed at the Umqua campgrounds, and they're expanding to have uh, more room and space for the upcoming events this summer. And, uh, but then they have the, almost every house out there is also a, an Airbnb too. So, um, you can, you can usually find outside of event time frames, usually find a house out there for rent. Right. Uh, Friday we were there, had some good riding in the rain. It wasn't too bad. And we literally had the entire dunes to ourselves. So that was pretty awesome. Yes, it was. <laughs> it was a little bit wet, but, uh, I mean, I remember when I came back, I actually propped up my camera in the back of the trailer and, uh, I was soaked. I was pretty yeah, well soaked. we were pretty wet. But I wasn't uncomfortable. Well, we weren't wet on the inside. We, 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 all, we all wore rain gear. For so. sure. Uh, it's important to address for, for the weather and to take prepared cautious, uh, measures to make sure you're comfortable and that you stay dry. Uh, when you're not dry, you're going you're gonna to end up being sick. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, on our rundown here, uh, you brought up dune etiquette. We were out riding all day or the rest of the day Friday and then all day Saturday Um you know, what kind of things came up or what kind of things do you have to recommend to people out on the dunes? Yeah, uh, this this industry has no shortage of people that are coming into it and they have no exposure to it. They've never been a snowmobiler or something like that, you know. And one of the things that, I mean, I was always flashing hands. When you guys were following me, I have two people behind me. So I would flash to the guy, I would flash to. And I figure he probably thinks that I was throwing him up a peace sign or something. Absolutely nobody replied. 
Yeah. You know, and, and I mean, we ran into anywhere from four to five machines at times. Nobody replied to that. So that that's important, especially in the mountains, man. And when you get into northern Idaho and you do that, people react. You know, yeah. if you flash a two and they got three behind them, they'll flash it. I mean, people are more familiar with that. But, I mean, UTV has brought so many people that just see this. They think it's going to be awesome, so they jump into it. And it's very important to pay attention, very important. I mean, there's a lot to learn. There's a lot you can learn from people that have been doing it for years. You know, one of the first things I do in a writing area that I'm not familiar with or a writing style I'm not familiar with is to talk about it with somebody that is. Right. Um, it's very important to, to maybe – pull some of those experiences off guys that have seen it all and, and have done it. Um, or even if it's just a guy that's done it once or twice more than you have. Right. Um, the first time I was out on the sand, you know, they were talking, you know, on this stretch, this is this, the entry stretch for everybody coming into the park. So stay on the right hand side. Don't go through the middle. Don't go on the left unless you have a spotter. Like, you know, those types of conversations are what you keep you safe and keep you from front ending into somebody else. Um, and, uh, there's, there's things like trail signals, like telling people how many people are falling behind you, um, which even on like the entrance to Coos or to, uh, Winchester, right. There's, there's basically an alley of sand that you're following through the trees to the dunes. And it's really tempting to just brap it around the corner sometimes and up over a bank or something just to have a little bit more fun right before you get out of the park we didn't do anything like that and uh you know sometimes you see the 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 park ranger and you pass him around the corner and then once he's gone you just want to floor it you know let's give it a little bit more gas to have a little bit less a little more extra fun there and um you know it's important to know that if there are three more people behind you that you can't do that because you're going to take somebody out on a quad and and there's a lot of families out there with kids and young people that don't have any opportunity to correct and save themselves from maybe a bad decision you've made. So, right, right. Yeah, there's no short, you know, and, and I would just implore people to pay attention the same way you would in your vehicle when you're going down the highway. I mean, I couldn't be, I couldn't or tell maybe you. they should start doing that in their vehicles too. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't <laughs> tell you how many people uh, I've run into on the trails out there, like, especially on the, on the, uh, the parks where you can actually have some ocean access. So all those ocean a- access trails are very long in some instances you know they can be upwards of about three to four miles long and it's mostly like whoops so you know some people don't like to take that stuff at speed they'll be going through that stuff at about 10 to 15 miles an hour well we're going through it at 40 to 50 and uh they don't even know you're back there because they're because they're not paying attention and that's i'm going to call it what it is man it's unacceptable you you need to you need to be aware of your surroundings. I mean, I couldn't begin to tell you I mean, how many people that we've come up on on the back, and we're totally polite. We're not going to go around them, you know. It's in unless it's just absolutely uh, a safe condition. But uh, you know, at a Coos Bay, it'll start to open up. You'll be on those trails, heading back towards the ocean or heading back from the ocean, and there's some areas where it opens up, and you go around those guys at Mach nine, and they get a look of shock on their face because they had no conception that you were back there. And that's, that's, it's not cool. (laughs) Well, and I think that there's a give and take on both sides. I think there's, you know, there's going to be people that don't want to go fast in general. Right. And don't want to just tear it up a hundred percent. There's some people, be people with injuries, people with, you know, different limitations that make them go slower. And then there's us young bucks that come out with a hot rodded vehicle that want to go, you know, balls to the walls a hundred percent of the time. And we we have to have a give and take on, on, you know, being polite and being courteous and making sure we're not being unsafe and things like that. So, and as it pertains to the give, I am more on uh, the polite side, a hundred percent. You know, I'm not trying to do anything that makes somebody feel like their life's in danger for, for sure. You know, but at the end of the day, it can get a little discouraging when you're behind a guy for five minutes because he won't get over because right. he's, he's blasting his music or something. He's drinking a beer and right. And I've, know, I've had times where in the front of the car and I've yeah. had times where there's been, you know, three quads wide on a trail and there's barely oh, room yeah. for a dirt bike to go yep. through at that point. And it's like, you know, you, you guys have to give a little bit here. Like for you, sure. Yeah. We understand there's, there's in, in the off-road community, there's a lot of, um, stress between, uh, single track riders, dirt bikes and quads versus full size vehicles like UTVs. There's always a stress of, well, this is a smaller trail. This is our trail. Like, don't try to infringe on us. But at the same time, it's not. It's it's a shared trail, and so we both need to be polite and respectful. But we also need to also uh, not um, enhance the stress in the situation by saying, well, you shouldn't be here anyways, or you right. know, you can slow down too. You yeah. don't have to go that fast yeah. or, or whatever. Like I pay a lot in taxes. You know, that's a non-starter. Like people need to be kind of considerate of one another. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, yeah. we're there to enjoy it just as much as everybody For else, sure. and so just 
uh, you know, be 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 curious if you're gonna if you're gonna go three wide or something to talk with your buddies, like just pull over, right? Like, go talk to your buddies. Exactly. Don't stay on the trail and do it. Yeah. Um, and it, I mean, I just I, I need to start cataloging noob stories. My goodness, man, we were we were headed back uh, from the ocean, uh, the Northwest UTV crew and myself, and I was about fifth or sixth back. You know, the guys took off before me, and I was hanging back, and we took a couple pictures, and we hit out. And then I get a radio call that there's a guy in the ditch, and we get up on it, and none of those trailers, I mean, you could drive two Power Stroke Ford trucks past each other, and nobody was really hauling butt. The car that was oncoming, it was YXZ. It wasn't hauling butt, but this guy gets so far over to the right, and he just tips and just falls right into the water. I'm just like, rookies, man, <laughs> rookies. I'm just like, I am just pray for you that you get through this weekend alive, man. It's just, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, there's there's definitely a, a very unique dynamic on on trail culture or dune culture and how people interact. And so, yeah. Um, just, and honestly, if, if guys are going out for like six months and they do some pretty serious riding over that six months, they're going to learn a lot. And I don't mean that in a bad way. They're going to learn a lot. And as long as they can get through that six months to eight months or something without an incident, uh, you're, you're going to be in good shape. Yep. While we were out there, we did a bunch of riding, we did a bunch of filming and, uh, we're able to get, we, we arrived Thursday, we rode Friday and, uh, Friday was our bluebird day. And then Saturday was a rainy day. Yep. So on on Friday, we had a great writing opportunity, great filming opportunity. Uh, should have filmed more, <laughs> but we were too busy having fun. We always have that, for sure. That's that's the battle yeah. we have. Is I'm a little disappointed in some of the footage on uh, off the, the hood of my car. You know, I don't have an intrusion bar that really allows for a very cent- uh, centered shot. You know, so, man... Talk about first world problems. This is, this is a producer and me just getting irritated. Like I, I was thinking to myself, I was like, dude, you should have just gone. You should have got bought the entire setup so that you could, because I've got a Hero 7 and it does a pretty good job. And uh, I didn't, you know, I didn't set it up properly. So we had to use a, make use of a little bracket on a, one of the V pillars on my, uh, on the front of my cage. And it, it's kind of, it's kind of canted off a little bit. And it, I was watching the footage of it. I'm like, Ian, you dummy. <laughs> you know? uh, it's not bad, though. It's not terrible. It's not terrible, but I'm just the perfectionist But me. uh But for, for all the guys that are always posting questions on which camera to get for their cars, just stop wasting your time. Either buy the Hero Black 7 or 8 and, yep. or the, the, G, D, the DJI Osmo action cam and get it done with. Like Those are the two options. Those are the two that are going to be the best. Or the Sony uh, X1000 or whatever it's called is a great camera as well. So Yeah, um, my, my take is now is anything less than the Hero 7, if I had it, I would use it for in-cab footage. Yeah. Like the Hero 7, the Hyper Smooth, when you put it in high definition, um, it does a great job. No question about it. I've seen the DJI stuff, and it's very, very impressive. Yeah, there were some shots that, uh, because I was recording in 2.7K, uh, with the hyper smooth two or the hyper smooth uh, gimbal, whatever they call it, um, you know there was some shots where it cropped in to, ten, to 1080p, which is what we put it, um, what kind of what we put it out at. But um, the front of the car clipped off, like all you saw was the scenery around it, and it looked like you were flying through the dunes. Like it, there was a couple of shots where you were just smooth sailing. Yeah. And yeah. I thought that was so cool. Like it, I, it does such a good job. And I love the footage. You had a camera facing backwards, and it caught some great stuff. You know, it caught some great stuff. Caught, your, caught Ben, uh, your brother Ben, nose diving off of a, a little bit of a sand dune. Man, was he lucky there. That, <laughs> that, was, a, that was a drop. That sucker was at least five feet. That well, was, it was the length of his car. Yeah. So yeah. the the thing is that when I first was putting it in the timeline to edit it, like I thought he had just came over too fast and kind of just like bopped, bombed out of it pretty he hard. He had all four off the ground, man. He had all four off the ground yep. and nose dived into the dune and then and came flat. And it was fine. He's got uh, Baja Designs BD uh, BD sixes or LP uh, BD. Hello, LP sixes on the front, and he showed up, and one of them was bent straight forward. <laughs> I'm like, that is an expensive fix, buddy. So, <laughs> um, so his car has uh, a bumper, and the and the front of the YXZ is pretty pointed, right? There's yeah. not a whole lot of front fascia to that you car. You need a bumper, and so he has a bumper. Is that one he made, or was he, that he did elite? make it? It's it's a no joke bumper. He he made a bumper that could you could go out and go round up cattle with that thing, and yeah, he made a no joke bumper on that. Yeah, but I mean that also speaks to the frame and the durability yep. of that of that system, right? So, uh, if he would have done that on like let's just say an XP or uh, some one of the other boxy cars. Uh, you know, your whole front frame would have been bent. Really? 
Yeah. 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 So, I mean, granted, it wasn't the biggest nose dart that I've seen, but at the same time, I've seen a lot smaller ones take out cars. Yeah. So I got hit by one of them. And, uh, you know, if there's one thing that I've heard uh, negative feedback on the X3 is that they have kind of lousy brakes. And uh, I'm been pleasantly. I didn't see su- any uh, hesitation in stopping on your yeah, car. Yeah, yeah. I I feel I'm pleasantly surprised by how well that thing. There's stops. a few times where you stopped faster than I did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> One where you got a little wet. I ended up in a pond. Yeah, yeah. yeah that was fun. Um, and there was actually it was awesome. quite a, there was quite a few times where we would hit you know pretty steep drop offs and and you would break it and then drop in and and I'd fly up behind you trying to keep you in the shot <laughs> yeah and i was more focused on that than i was actually driving yeah uh you can't do that in the dunes you got to focus on what you're doing you made a comment that i nailed you with some sand once too and you caught it oh you, yeah you caught oh, the footage in the video it, and i watched that and i was going oh man that's because what that was camera was about. off to the it side it was off to the side yeah and, and I, I got the full face of that oh, roost man. <laughs> yeah and, you know I, I made the comment to you i'm like yeah no i didn't do anything like that on purpose for sure and then when i saw the footage yeah it was completely natural thing i was like yeah that was a bummer but i've, I've been on the recipient and uh, receiving it into that as well. So. Yeah, it's just the nature of the beast when it's you're doing. recording with uh, GoPros in the dunes. Yeah. Like you, you have to be close if you want to see anything. Yeah. And yeah. So, um, footage, footage wise, what would you change? Because I've been putting a lot of thought into this. I can tell you exactly what I want going into the summer. I mean, granted, yeah. it's going to cost me seven thousand dollars, but <laughs> um, the 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 two things that I would take away from our trip in Winchester as far as a filming uh, outing. Uh, would be one to do more uh, tripod shots where we're doing long lens, getting more scenic stuff. Um, that stuff was so epic looking. I just wish I had tons more of it. Yeah. Uh, and then more drone footage. Like we just didn't take the time to uh, really think out the drone and its capabilities and what we were doing. And because we we, we mean, had a little bit of a malfunction with it though. You know, uh, when I was flying it through your car, uh, uh, it it took it out. <laughs> No, so so to clarify, to clarify, we were on Ian's property yeah. doing some stuff, and he decided to show off <laughs> and take his take his DJI uh, Phantom through the uh, or Mavic, sorry, the inter- uh, through the, the cab of the, the Razor. Dude, it's 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 basically its internal software is what caused that wreck. I mean, right. you know, and it, it was in, yeah, it freaked out, and it was in sport mode, so it shouldn't have done that. You know, I've flown those things through cabs so many times; it's ridiculous, backwards, forwards, and that thing just froze on me when I was trying to send it through your car. And then which next before thing that you know, car, before that, you had flown it through your X3 multiple times. I think two or three times, exactly. And there was no problem, none. But as soon as you went through the XP, you went through the no, XP. I went through the XP too. You went through the XP Piece one time, and then you went to go through it a second time. Yeah. And it freaked out. And it freaked out. And it yeah. went straight into the A pillar. <laughs> it's, D- it's it's DJI's fault. So I think we should charge them for yeah, those for propellers. sure. For sure. So yeah, we had a little bit of a problem, and uh, you know, being a battery guy too, these things run on lithium batteries, and you know, you're supposed to get like 15 minutes of flight time. Well, you don't get 15 minutes of flight time with uh, when the temperatures are low. You get roughly about maybe 60 percent of what that battery's capacity is. So you might get like 10 minutes of flight time. Right. So you are right. We should have got 10 times more drone footage, though, and we will next time. Yeah, so, for sure. Yeah. Uh, you know, the biggest thing about this trip was, you know, cabin fever, getting out of the house, yeah. getting some riding in, and not only riding, but riding in the dunes. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, for me personally, with uh, uh, riding Uncle Ben's XP Turbo with no paddles um, and uh, some blown out front suspension, uh, there were some limitations on what I could do, but just the fact that we were out there and the sand was t- tacky enough for me to have fun and, and do things. Your, um, your content off your GoPros on day three, you can tell where your confidence level in that car was because I was watching you, you know, when we go up in side hill dunes, mm-hmm. like the steepest dunes out at Winchester, like I'm seeing how long I can hold those lines. And by day three, you were on those lines so much longer than the first couple of days. Like, you know, the sand, the sand was probably a little bit tackier. So that's probably where yep. some of that came from. Yep. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you were holding lines that during the summer you will not be able to hold because that sand will give, you know, right, it, for was, sure. it was awesome. It was yeah. Awesome. That, that car was my first, that was my first time in that car, uh, driving it, like me driving it, like not with somebody and then having an opportunity to drive it, but just right. driving it by myself all day long. Right. So it was my kind of my break in experience with that car. Uh, whereas before I've always had XP fours, uh, one thousands, and then a previous to that, a, a turbo. So I've always had the long wheelbase. I've always had that extra bit of stability that I, uh, wasn't used to on this car. So, um, 
it was a good experience to get into a two seater uh, and have some time in it. Uh, I just haven't had as much two seater time as I've had four seater time. So uh, that was good for me. Yeah. 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 If I were to change something up and I'm going to change something up going up, going into the summer, uh, I want a hero seven or a hero eight off the hood. Um, probably like on the V pillar intrusion, excuse me, on the intrusion bar. Um, I want a uh, Hero 6, maybe a couple of them. I want one facing out back, uh, and I want cab footage. Um, I would just get all sevens. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. You know, it's only money, but um, I want a uh, I want a DJI Ronin for my uh, Canon EOS R, and uh, I want the new Canon R5 to come out. <laughs> <laughs> I, think we're, I think we're all looking for the R5. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So that, that, that's my wish list for content, and I mean, that's probably your... your well, that's your wish list for hardware. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're probably talking $8,000. Uh, I'm very happy with that drone, though. I'm very happy. You know, it's got that Hasselblad lens on it, and it... it oh, it's it, a great, it, great tool. Put, that puts out some good shots. The, uh, the, the, the I guess there was three things. The third thing that um, I wish we would have done more of is uh, auxiliary shots in the like the wheel well, seeing the suspension Absolutely. moving, all that kind of stuff. For so, sure. Um, in cab stuff, all yeah. that stuff. It just comes down to time, you know? It's well, like you, per- get out, you get out there, you get three days, you want to get all that riding in, and uh, it's you're, you're dependent on the weather. So Yeah, you know, like I said, cabin fever, you just want to get the yeah. throttle therapy. You're not really caring about the footage. But right. I think for... Uh, for what we were doing, um, getting, getting our therapy in as well as making some content, I think we put out a pretty good video. My take is for a vlog, it did great. If it was for a documentary, we would probably want another three to four days. Oh, I would want at least a week. Yeah, for, for sure. sure. A lot of conversation that came up around this as well is the Winchester versus Coos Bay. Uh, like which one would you rather ride? And so from, uh, not being, I've been to Winchester a couple of times now. Um, I've not been to Coos Bay, right? Um, and so being someone that has been on the dunes at both, uh, kind of what's your pr- take on which one's diff- the differences between the two and which one would you prefer? Um, for me, it's Winchester. I, I like the hill climbs. I like the shoots. There's so many climbs out at Winchester that are, um, they're quad specific, you know I mean? you're not going to run into quads up there. It's no big deal, but you know, a 72 inch machine is very, very challenged to get through a lot of that stuff. And there's no shortage of those out at Coos Bay as well, but they don't have the, the, they're not as steep as the ones out at Winchester. Winchester's got much, much bigger dunes. Like the biggest dune at Coos Bay is a pretty average dune at Winchester. So the big knock against Winchester is it's not very big. You know, Coos Bay is much, much more vast. That said, if you like to trail ride, you can't beat Coos. It is so fun. So if you just want to go right and left and you want to do some high-speed stuff, assuming it's safe... Uh, Coos Bay is going to be the ticket. And there's some spots in Coos Bay that you can absolutely disappear in too. Like you can go, uh, you go way up north by spin reel and you start to work your way back towards the ocean. And then another entire park opens up. Like we went north out of that uh, and we found this, I mean, all the locals are going to laugh, but it was so, it was very touching. Like we found this uh, memorial. So we're all, all these guys, when they would lose one of their riding buddies, and we're not talking, they lost their riding buddy riding. You're just talking life. Uh, they would put up a memorial on this tree that's in the backside of that park that's on the north end of that park. And I just thought that was killer. Like, I'm not a very sentimental guy. That there, I was just thinking to myself, man, if one of my boys ever goes out or something like that or vice versa, if something happens to me or something and they go do that, that's just so cool. That yeah. was so cool. And you see that, we, we captured that on our full throttle video. Um, so, you know, you're, you're kind of splitting hairs between those two parks. They're, they're very different. They're equally just amazing, amazing. My take, I, I really enjoy Winchester. I love Winchester. I think it comes back down to that whole continuous question that it, that is long-lasting in our industry is, what's the best this, right? And it's always, the answer is always mixed bag of, give us more information. We, right. need to, we know your objectives, your styles, your desires, all that kind of stuff. And I think that's exactly what comes down to these two locations if you if you like challenges, go to Winchester. If you like going fast and having space, go to Coos. Right. And if you want to be on the ocean, go to Coos. Right. So I think that's kind of the the answer that I've been giving people is 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 that kind of summarize summarization. So right, right. I would say the the facilities at Coos. You know, I'm not trying to tick anybody off here, but currently the facilities at Coos are probably a little bit better. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think camping is a little easier at Coos. That, that's kind of been. One of the topics that people have brought up outside of the writing discussion has been it's easier to get in and out of coups. It's easier to um, stretch out a little bit and relax. 
And being able to be on the ocean is always a huge benefit as well. The other thing is, is you got Coos Bay right there too. So if there's anything that you need from town, it's 10 minutes away. Yeah, you're not driving 45 minutes. Exactly. Uh, So speaking of camping, (laughs) we we decided to camp out in your trailer, uh, which was, you know, for me, no big deal. But uh, I did forget my... (laughs) <laughs> my blanket and my pillow and relied solely on a um, sleeping bag that was entirely too small. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, tip, pro tip for everybody out there, check check your stuff. Make sure you fit in it before you leave. For sure. I felt like I was in one of my kids' uh, sleeping bags the whole night. Yeah, we had a uh, we had a heater that does, did a pretty good job. And then we had a heater that was way, way overkill. You know, <laughs> uh, the one that did a pretty good job was good, assuming that you're right next to it. Um, yeah. but, uh, yeah. And then the other, well, the temperature here. dropped pretty good at night too. So yeah. there was about a 15 degree, 20 degree difference. So during the day it was great. It was nice and warm and toasty. And then at night it just, it's, it zapped all the energy out of that thing. Yeah, for sure. For sure. But, uh, yeah, sorry, as far as comfort level and the trailer and everything, I, I didn't have any problems with it, but, uh, I know that, uh, you're looking to do some, maybe some upgrades on your machine, the on tra- your trailer. The trailer as we speak is in my, um, in my brother's pasture. And uh, he is a, uh, he's one heck of a fabricator and one heck of a woodworker. And uh, he's going to be doing some stuff to it, probably some fold down beds, probably some uh, uh, tool storage. I, well, things. maybe some tool storage stuff, but we do so much content related stuff. I, you know, I was talking to him about some workbenches and stuff, a place where we can set up, uh, set up gear and not have to really fiddle around with it, where we're going to leave it there permanently. Like and a working desk area. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, it's a 27, 27 foot of storage and a 30 foot overall trailer. So we got, we got room to do it. And I, I'll tell you, man, we put my car and your car in there with room to spare. Yeah, that there was, was, that there was, really was probably good. a good two feet on the back exactly. end and a good two We had a lot two of feet personal gear worked around the car. That's how much room that trailer had. So, right. Yeah. So trailer camping, it's a thing. I'm good with it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a lot of money to be saved there. <laughs> yeah. And get used to it this summer, man. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So we summarized our trip up into our vlog. Uh, and if you haven't subscribed to it yet, uh, youtube.com slash side by side guys. And, uh, yeah, you did a heck of a job on that vlog, by the way. Thank you. Um, I got to tell you too, man. I mean, you know how I love shots. They're, they're, they're just shot you take of this crabber, this guy going out and setting crab pots and he's walking along the pier and you're, you're following him. But then the very next shot, I can tell you, put it down on the tripod. You Mm -hmm. put it down on its little tripod and you caught him walking away. I mean, it looks like something that would be straight out of a documentary. I mean, the color was phenomenal. The shot was phenomenal. And there was a depth of field thing where the dock itself was in perfect focus, but he was leaving focus. It was so killer. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, if we ever do a documentary, make sure you save that shot. (laughs) (laughs) We have... uh... You know, I think we both have a desire to put out top-notch content, yeah. and it's only going to get better as yeah. we settle into our filmmaking shoes. Well, that, and that's funny because a lot of feedback that we're getting online right now. I mean, like one guy commented, he was like, uh, "You guys going for an Oscar or something like that?" I'm like, dude, <laughs> you that. haven't seen anything yet. This is the vlog. Wait till you get to the meat, man. We're going to be freaking killing. Yeah, our, <laughs> our brains were in the throttle. Oh, for sure, on the camera, for so. sure. And every time I pick up my camera, I learn stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just one of those things where it's just, it's an obsession. You know, people tell me all the time, "Why don't you just go enjoy the ride?" I'm like. Because I enjoy this just as much. Yeah, you know, it's, they're both they hit different sides of the brain. They I think. do. It's like a well-struck golf ball, man. You just want to tee it right back up and kill it. <laughs> so, going back to your car, were there any kind of um, things you noticed taking uh, the dunes in a Y in an X3 versus a YXZ? That I mean, obviously, we've already talked about the durability of the YXZ and this being more of like a, a conglomeration of parts that can work together and things like that. But just going into the dunes for the first time. With a new mindset, with a new vehicle, new scats, new tune, new everything, really. Yeah. Uh, what was your takeaway? So I don't know if you noticed this or not, but I was looking for places to challenge that car. Like I was looking for something that would shut me down and I couldn't find it. Like I, I I'm kind of dumb. <laughs> like there was a, a you, you remember we were in the back end and we were overlooking that lake. And I think that's where you got that fog shot yep. that opened up the clip. Yep. There was a chute that goes straight down into the trees and it's a, it's a quad trail. Yep. Period. It's quad trail. It's not made for a 72-inch machine. The last clip I have before you being in the tree yeah. was you going down that trail. <laughs> really? Okay. I, I haven't seen it yet, but like like I'm literally looking down at the end, and I pulled up my phone to get a visual on, uh, to get just a map, of a satellite image to see if I even had room to turn around. And I couldn't see anything, but I looked at it for probably about 15 seconds. I'm like, all right, done thinking about it. I'm going. And I just walk right back to my rig and I go down. Like we did some pretty cool stuff, you know, in terms of what got my adrenaline going. 
I can't say that anything got my adrenaline going. Everything was just completely euphoric. Like I was so happy the whole time we were out there. That trail got my blood going like big time. Like I'm going down there. I'm like, this was, could be a mistake, you know, because if (laughs) there's nowhere to turn around. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're on a trail that was made for a banshee and I'm going down in this thing and I'm ducking trees right and left. I'm going, this is going to get tricky coming out of this thing. And the beautiful thing about that X3, and sure enough, I get to the bottom and I had a place to turn around and I come back out. And as I start to come up, the car wants to go off the edges and boy had it, we would, I would have been in a pickle, like yeah. a bad one. And uh, so I'm ducking these trees on the way out all the while I'm about 20% throttle. And that's the beautiful thing about that X3 is I didn't get stuck. 20% of the throttle got me out of there, even though that pitch was probably 60 degrees, 70 degrees, and then it only gets steeper. And by the time I got to the point where I was wide enough and I knew that I could get out of there, I was full throttle all the way out. Yeah. But when I got out of there, I was, my blood was going. I was like, this is what I came for. And, you know, and like, just to be clear, this, this wasn't a high traffic day. There was literally right, nobody right, out there. Right. And so we were no concern that we were going to hit somebody, run into somebody. And, and even if there was a bunch of people out there, it's the type of trail where you would have had a bunch of people on top of it, blocking it off. You right. know, it, it could, it would have been safely done, but, uh, yeah, that was the trail. And when I got stuck, you know, I, I didn't even get stuck. Like I went around, I, I went up this chute between not, not a, on that first trail on a, on a different, on a different one. Yeah. You know, we've, you and I are like, it's like a squirrel thing. You know, you see all this deadfall that makes for a very pretty image. We attack it, you know, because we know it's going to look good on a GoPro or it's going to look good on a camera. So I went up this chute and I, I, as, as I'm going up it, I see I have three options. So I'm going to take the one that I think is the most difficult. And I go up the most difficult one. And then the next thing you know, I've got a, a window of about 64 inches or something like that to do a complete 180 to get around this, this tree that's fallen. And I knew that there was, forget it, you're not getting around it. And I can't see out of that thing, so I'm not going to back down. And I get in there, and it starts to scratch on my door. And then it hit my scat and I'm like, okay, we're shutting it down. You know, yeah. I, I just stopped the car at that point. Cause uh, those, those scats are, you know, I don't want the sidewall is on them. It's next to nothing. It's probably not much yeah, more than a piece of paper. Yeah, they're down pretty thin. For sure. For sure. And they're very expensive. So I, I just shut it down and we wound up having a winch out of there. But uh, yeah, you, you came up with a good plan for getting the butt coming around and getting itself clear. Um, my door has uh, a significantly uh, much more noticeable scar on the side of it. Not the, not the end of the world is going away, but that, that's uh, called memories. It is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, some of the best riding we did was on day three. I had a blast. I had a blast on day three. That was such a good time. Cause we got into the, the back end, the South end of the park and that South end of the park, if you were going to take like your wife there, your kids there, all that is, is flowy. Yeah. It's just flowy. It's almost like surfing. You know, nothing too sketchy. You know, we found some dunes out there where they're completely blown out to where you're side hilling them and you're jumping in midair, you know, on a well, dune. That's the that's, best part of my opinion. It's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. I, I live I, for it. But but if you don't want to scare your passenger, that south end of the park will give you a very good appreciation for uh, just that flowy, like free flowing feeling. Yeah. And uh, we, we hit that and it was a blast. You know, the, 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 the little, the little, jets you have on the side hills when they're blown out like that um that that's a different type of feeling like people don't under, like people jump flat they mm-hmm. jump on rollers they jump on all sorts of stuff jumping when your car is at a 60 degree angle sideways <laughs> that's awesome it's a different feeling and i i will say that the the most memorable time mem- most memorable moment that i had at winchester this time we went was not even paying attention to what you guys were doing and hearing some, hearing your engine brap around the dune, and hearing somebody going screaming, that's <laughs> just giggling like a little girl. Yeah, we won't, we won't call anybody out, but uh, yeah, I, I, I took a couple dudes for for a rip, and uh, one of them was white, like <laughs> not Caucasian, <laughs> like Casper the Ghost. Yeah. So, uh, you know, those are the those are the memories we like making are the ones oh, that sure. that let us kind of let go of you know stress and and just go all out and have fun. There's certain witch eyes out there too that are like three to four feet somewhere in that ballpark. And on the X3, you can just pin it and just fly off of them. Oh yeah. And a lot of people aren't used to that. Yeah. So when I, when they were in my car, I made sure to do that. Just like, this is, <laughs> this is how you attack this guy. So yeah. <laughs> I, just, I would just sail it and, uh, I'm in the card case, but whatever. <laughs> it can handle it. So anyways, it was a good trip. It was uh, a blast. A lot of good memories. And, uh, you know, we're going to be doing a lot more stuff like that where we get out 
see things, do things, and interact with people. So uh, speaking of which, we're going to be going to a few different events in that area. Uh, you know, the first one that's going to be coming up is UTV Takeover Coos Bay in June. Yep. And uh, we're going to be hitting that event as Side by Side Guys to do an actual podcast from the event. Uh, so we're going to hopefully connect with some of the personalities and brands out there and uh, talk through them. So if you guys have any questions uh, that you want to be uh, kind of proposing to the community or to the vendors or the people that are out there, uh, hit us up. We'll start logging those and getting those questions answered. Um, but uh, we're also going to be out riding and filming and covering the event. We're going to take a look at the racing and take a look at the different uh, types of events, things that you can participate in as a community member. Yeah, and get some of the personalities on camera. Get a yeah. microphone in front of their face and uh, kind of talk to them about talk to them about the area, talk to them about riding, talk to them about how UTVs affected them. Um, you know, I'm not trying to get all like spiritual about it. I mean, you kind of know that I I, I kind of have like a surfer's mentality sort of to this, where it's you. You're, you're trying to push yourself. You're trying to have so much fun. Just kind of find that edge and and live on it and stuff like that. And there's a lot of people that ride for that very reason. Yep. It's not just sightseeing. Yeah. When you can disconnect from everything else and you and your machine are so closely bonded that you know that it just becomes an extension of you. Yeah. The experience you can have in a dune setting is unlike anything else. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I, I uh, the, when I met you, you know, I probably only put on about 20 miles that week. And my average now, whenever I hit Winchester, is somewhere around one. I mean, I didn't really hit that much this go around. It was probably about one. I was meaning to go look at the, the tack on the machine. Yeah. I'll put it up on the screen here Boop. <laughs> uh, to see how far we went. But yeah. uh, it's funny how uh, not even going 10 miles in the dunes can feel so much better than going 10 miles anywhere else. Especially if you're not used to it, yep. if you're not used to that type of riding. So there's going to be a lot of uh, cool stuff for us to do at that show. And then we're also going to be, uh, so that's at Coos Bay and then at Winchester Bay, we'll do Dune Fest in July. And uh, they hit us up and we're going to work with them to create some content as well. So uh, we'll be at that event to, again, uh, do a podcast and to um, bring you the experience, the things that are happening and the things that you can participate with. Uh, and so it should be a good time. I think yeah. I think those two months... Uh, I, the whole summer is going to be packed full of different things we're doing. So, um, And it just seems to add, you know, I mean, we, we've got a couple events that we have to go to in May that uh, two months ago weren't on the schedule. Just stuff that's kind of just popped up organically. It's it's getting busy. It's getting yeah. really busy. So Polaris, Can-Am, any of you guys want to sponsor us? We're open to it. Uh, we could use it. Uh, but uh, yeah, we're hoping to uh, bring you some good content this year and uh, really expand what the community uh, can expect from you know, the rest of the, the content developing communities. And then in conjunction with what we have going on on our own, some of the scheduled rides that we have doing, I mean, some of the rides that we have scheduled right now, we're doing them for the sake of getting people to kind of challenge themselves what, uh, what's out there. I mean, you're talking three, four days. Not, we're not talking gnarly stuff. We're not talking high speed stuff. We're talking, uh, distance stuff. Yeah. We're talking, uh, self experiential. Sim- yep. Yeah, we're talking stuff where, uh, where essentially you are, uh, relying on your vehicle. It's like, uh, self-sustained type stuff where everything that you need is on that vehicle and you have to get through it for the better part of three to five days for a ride. I mean, you're talking, I mean, we have one scheduled, it's 1400 miles, 1400 miles. Yep. You know, can't wait. Sounds man. good to me. Giddy up. Let's go. I'll do it tomorrow. Let's go. <laughs> uh, and then an event that's coming up relatively around that time frame, I think, is King of the Castle. Yeah. Up in uh, yep. Oregon. So we're talking, this is a big Oregon theme, really, uh, this show. Um, but King of the Castle is an event that they've been trying to put together for the last couple of years. Uh, finally got all the permitting and approvals from the state to do it. Uh, and they're going to be doing a bunch of desert style racing out there. And I think that's a. Um, 100 mile race, right? Yeah, uh, 19 mile track, 100 mile total. So it sounds like they're going to do somewhere in the ballpark of about five laps. So uh, I got a little bit of detail on it. We got to get some more clarification. Uh, The way that the classes are broke down makes sense. Um, Yeah. But uh, it looks like it's a run to start, which I've only done a run to start in uh, motocross and enduro racing. Um, basically what happens is you start like 20 yards behind your machine. Somebody shoots a shotgun, you run to your machine, you get buckled in and you go, which on a dirt bike, you throw your leg over it, you <laughs> Not kick a big it deal. and you go. Yeah. In this, you got it. I, I, I put I a harness on and all that stuff. And I mean, yeah, 
I don't know. You know, I, my take is on it. And I was looking at uh, I was looking at the class that I was thinking about attacking. I uh, I was thinking to myself that if it's something to the tune of about ten riders in it, I might jump in and I might do it. But if it's like thirty, I mean, coming into an event season right out of that build being done and going up against probably a bunch of people that see this event and they're just like, hey, I want to be part of that. Yeah. You know. Not really into it, man. I'm not really into... Desert not, racing is not a sport to go in when you have a car you're trying to keep pretty. Uh, well, it's not even keep pretty. It's one of those things where, you know, you know what I'm talking about, man. I mean, <laughs> there's a reason that a lot of these big events, especially in motocross, like the Desert 100, they have a poker run. And that poker run is so families can go out there, have fun, not feel pressure to have to go super, super fast. And some of these events need to have that. You know, I made the comment that... You, I feel like you should have to earn your way onto that starting line. So that way you're racing against the best of the best. You're racing against guys who have their rig prepped. So if they have a problem, a mechanical problem, they can deal with it on the trail and they're not going to slow everybody up and they're probably not going to endanger people. Whereas people, again, I mean, I'm not trying to knock the new guys or something like that, but you have to put more than just, you got to put more thought into it than just, uh, I'm going to go in and just flog the throttle. You know, I think it has, uh, there's a, there's definitely some validation in, the idea that you can take a group of people and say, okay, you belong in the experienced class that are going to compete hard against each other. And then you belong in the class where you're just out there to have a good time, see the limits of your machine and experience the racing thing. Right. Um, and so a lot of that comes up to the personality behind the wheel that says, okay, I'm going to be honest about this. I don't know a whole lot about what I'm doing. I'm going to, I'm going to fall back to the, the OE, the stock class or whatever. And did you see, uh, Ronnie is either RJ or Ronnie Anderson's latest Instagram post. He mm -hmm. held, he held the lead, uh, on the re race over the last oh, week. And RJ he held the, yeah. no, it was Ronnie. Uh, Ronnie held the lead the entire race came into a lap guy that uh, may or may not should should have been there or not, you know, and uh, it took him out. And it, oh, so he took his he took his wheel out on a competitor, not an obstacle. I believe so, oh. and uh, had a guy that was in a position to get in there. And I mean, when you're talking points, you're talking money. Yeah. And uh, and I'm I mean I'm just speculating here because I didn't have visibility on it. I don't know exactly what happened. I'm just going into what they said on that post. But uh, you know, racing uh, there's certain you got to know your limits. The, the racing is definitely a community of of. Uh, respect like if you know you're not going to be able to do this this section and there's somebody on your tail you move out of the way like that's the respectful thing to do to those guys that can compete at a different level than you sure uh and that's why uh you know race series like um uh king of hammers and all these other guys have mechanisms in place horns and sirens and things that if you hear one that means and you're in the way and qualifying yeah so yeah. um you know the the organizers do their best to try to weed out the the chaff of people that are going to cause a bad experience for everybody else, but you're just always going to run into those guys that talk a bigger game than they can produce. Um, you know, that's just part of the game, I think. Yeah, UTV does kind of sort those guys out. It sorts it out the you know, I mean, most people that I know consider themselves to be a good driver. Some of those people are excellent drivers. Some of those people are probably a little bit ex inexperienced and maybe in a little bit over their head. I'm just saying. It just goes back to what we were talking about. If you can get six months under your belt, you're going to know your limits. Yeah. You know, if you're riding, if you're riding pretty regularly. So, uh, anyways, I wanted to post, uh, the question to the community, uh, you know, via comment section in YouTube, or if it be on Facebook or Twitter or whatever, uh, you know, let us know what you're looking to do this year. Uh, we have a lot of content we're doing around events. We have a lot of content around some things that we're trying to do. Uh, but if you are out there and you have, um, you know, a great idea for some content or you have some questions about a machine or a, a different, uh, just a different angle on something, throw those things out to us. Uh, we'll either answer them directly in dms or we'll answer them on the podcast or just make a whole video content series around it um there's some things that i'm going to be uh filming here soon about um lighting and things like that that uh are just topics that i continue to see in the community and and i i want there to be somewhere for somebody to go and get those answers so that's awesome it's one of the most uh, mo the most frequent questions i get is pertaining to our gear yeah to, to facilitate this it's thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars. <laughs> well, I mean, if you're in the UTV industry at all, you understand that you pay to play and, and that there's some there's some dollars to be saved and there's some dollars to be spent. So. Yeah, I can tell you I would have the biggest turbo known to man if I had in my engine what I have in my backpack 
when I'm riding down those trails. You know, <laughs> it, uh, it's not uh, photography, cinematography, stuff like that. It's not a cheap hobby, but for sure. So anyways, uh, to wrap up with the episode, uh, we had a great time in Winchester. Um, it's always a good time out there unless you're destroying your machine. Um, and uh, we had some good uh, memories. Hopefully you like the video. If you haven't seen it, again, go to sidebysideguys.link slash vlog two and subscribe. three. Subscribe. Um, and then subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, we have a lot of content that we're going to be putting there um, that you can't just really kind of interact with the same way as you would if it was posted to Facebook or, or whatever. So uh, we're on Facebook, obviously, at Side by Side Guys, uh, Instagram, Twitter, all at Side by Side Guys. And uh, the website is going to be something that I'm going to start building out a little bit more over the summer. So it's going to be more a place for news and information, uh, a lot more of product information, data that will help you make decisions on things. Um, so make sure to bookmark sidebysideguys.com. Um, and if you see sidebysideguys.link anywhere, it's a link that we validated that we want to forward you to something, whether that be a piece of content, whether that be a vendor's website, um, things like that. Uh, and so uh, yeah, just, just pay attention to, you know, all the different social mediums. They all have a purpose, uh, and we're going to use them to the best of our ability to communicate the content that we hope that you want to see. So, um, and you are able to interact with us, send us a DM, send us an email. Um, probably uh, a little bit too early to talk about it, but, uh, you know, once we hit, uh, once the page hits, the YouTube page hits a certain amount of subscribers, we're going to, we're going to look at doing some giveaway stuff. So yeah, so multiple on, giveaway stuff, hopefully on so. each platform, we're looking to do some giveaway stuff here soon. Uh, and I think we're going to be doing a thousand subscriber giveaway on YouTube, which will be a pretty quick one. Uh, hopefully once the, um, the videos start pumping out here. So, uh, look for that. Uh, each platform will be doing something and uh, hopefully engaging the community and, and allowing you guys to uh, maybe benefit from that. So uh, also I'm trying to work on, uh, as we start to develop our product review system um, to facilitate a giveaway with each one of those. So uh, if we're getting something in to review, we're hopefully also gonna be getting one to give away to the community. Uh, that benefits the supplier, that benefits us, that benefits you. It's kind of a win-win situation. So. Um, we have some reviews coming down the pike. We have um, a really interesting light bar that um, I think everybody will be super interested in. Uh, that one I know for sure is not going to have a giveaway option, but uh, maybe we'll give away the unit we review. Yep. So uh, we'll take a look at that. And uh, we have a number of different products from vendors that you know and trust already, but we also have some stuff coming in from new vendors that you might not have heard before. Yeah, and the the X3 currently, we didn't even cover this. The X3 is down in Hermiston, Oregon with a gentleman by the name of Jeff Johns. Uh, he's building my cage. Um, <clears throat> when that car comes back, we've got products that are literally sitting in your garage right now to, do, to yep. throw on there. So uh, word to the addiction, uh, addiction motorsports guys, we have not forgot about you. We still have that bracket and we still have that battery to put in there because that's one heck of an upgrade for the X3. And so we've got we've got a we've got a list, man. We've got for a sure. list. Yeah, so. we got a lot of work to do. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Looking so, forward to it. Um, uh, yeah, so if you guys have any uh, requests, I mean, I've posted a, a post about this a while back about what things you want to see reviewed, but uh, if there's something that you've, you know, maybe been putting off because you didn't know exactly which route to go or whatever, let us know. We'll cover the topic. We'll let you know. We'll, we'll get the details for you and possibly get a, a product interview to maybe answer that question. So, yeah. Um, a lot of good stuff coming. Hopefully, uh, we're entertaining enough to keep you around. Uh, we would hope that you would subscribe and like and follow and share and all that kind of good stuff. It really basically helps us increase the momentum that we've already started. Yeah. Now, I'm hilarious and bald, and you are super knowledgeable and have the best head of hair of anybody I know. So, <laughs> so I hope everybody enjoyed uh, the fact that I got a haircut today and, and was able to show it off. Uh, it's like the but... first thing I said when I came through your door. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yeah, uh, look for us uh, this summer at all the events that we can get to. And if you see us, uh, see the logo on our cameras or whatever, stop by, say hi. We're not scared. So uh, just don't bring in the uh, coronavirus with you and we'll be good. There you go. <laughs> so, everybody, be safe. Wash your hands 20 seconds or more. Stay safe and, and healthy. And we'll see you on the next one. All right. Peace. Peace.